23,000 children languishing on a wait list as a result of the previous Liberal administration was unfair, unequitable, and unsustainable, and it was disgusting. The reason we are here today is we have listened to some parents who have told us that their child's needs are, are very severe, and we want to make sure that we can best support them. But make no mistake, we are going to continue on April 1st, and I will make no apologies for getting 23,000 children who are left to languish on a wait list off that wait list. That is our priority. That has been our motivation from day one, and will continue to be our motivation. The Ontario government is making some amendments to its controversial autism funding plan. Parents of autistic children launched emotional protests after the government announced funding changes last month. Now the government says all families with an autistic child will be eligible for some funding no matter what their income and some children with more severe autism could qualify for additional assist assistance. So how are parents reacting? Laura Kirby McIntosh is the president of the Ontario Autism Coalition and she joins us now. Hi there, nice to see you. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Let me start off by asking about what the government of course announced today. Is this, uh, is this a win for parents who had been fighting the original announcement? This is a, a step in the right direction for sure. Um, I think there are people that are going to be breathing a little bit easier and, and sleeping a little bit better uh, tonight. There's definitely some good things in, uh, in the announcement, but we still have a lot of unanswered questions and, and a lot more work to do. So let's start off with the good part. What specifically, I mean, is it the means, the removal of the means testing that is the biggest victory there? Uh, that's a huge victory. We're, we're delighted to see that go. Um, we're glad to see that parents are going to have the, the choice to use funding for speech or occupational therapy as well as ABA. That's something that a lot of people in our, communicate, in our community rather have been advocating for. Um, we're, we're glad to see that there's a, at least a six-month reprieve for kids in service. Um, so that's definitely good. I think for me, though, the most important part of, of today's announcement is that the minister is, is going to hold really the meaningful con consultations that she should have held before the first announcement. Um, so that's, that's excellent that, uh, that people are going to be at the table. I, I hope we can be part of those conversations. Um, I hope um, professionals can be part of those conversations. Um, I hope people that actually have autism can be at that table. Um, and, and I hope that ultimately this, this in turn moves to a dialogue about disability rights in, in general. You know, it's, it's not lost on me that like today's announcement comes on World Down Syndrome Day and, you know, autism is getting a lot of attention lately and that's great. Um, but we also need to be talking about, about the, the more systemic, broader issues as well. Can I ask you uh, more specifically about the what they will be studying in those consultations? It's my understanding that the idea that 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 kids who have are on the more severe end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. who have more severe needs, will actually that's what they're going to consult around essentially because they had capped that in the original yeah. announcement. Uh, yeah. What what are you looking for uh, to come about as a result of those consultations? Well, the, the, the two big things that, that are unanswered for me right now is will we see an end to the age discrimination that's still embedded in this program where the funding that families receive drops simply because their child has a birthday? Um, and the other is, is what you just mentioned. We want to see a system that is needs-based. The whole idea of giving everybody in the program the exact same amount made no sense. That is the literal definition of equality, but it is not equity. Um, so we're looking for a system that responds to the individual needs of, of the person, um, that you know, takes into account um, the level of their needs. And we know, for instance, that on that waiting list uh, that apparently is 23,000, I have some questions about that number, um, but we know that not everybody is in the same place on the autism spectrum on that list. And, and so we need a system that's able to respond to that based on the individual need. You, you talk about that wait list, and I want to ask you about it because uh, that, was the, that was sort of the message that we heard from the government when they made mm. their original announcement. You know, we want to clear that wait list, hence mm. we're making these decisions. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that they still plan on clearing it within 18 months. Uh, does that raise any concerns with you? Do you think that's still possible if they do go ahead with these types of changes? Well, I, I think there's some interesting things that need to, to be looked at um, in order to, to answer that question. Um, so there's been a way, there's been a change in the way that funding moves through the system. Um, and I, I kind of want to see us go through two fiscal quarters where, where all of the funding now is basically moving through what's called a direct funding model. I think that that's going to save millions of dollars. 
And you know, our organization has never asked for, for this government to spend more money on this file. Um, we think that there's efficiencies that can, can be found in, in the system. So um, look, clearly the autism community doesn't love wait lists. Um, so, you know, reducing or, or eliminating those wait lists is a, is a noble goal, but the devil's always in the details, right? It's, it's how you do it. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that over the next six months, the ministry will be able to look at data and look at, um, at how much money they're saving by changing the way that funding flows. I also hope that at those tables, we'll have a meaningful con uh, conversation about regulation. Of, of the field of applied behavioral analysis. That's a huge thing that they missed in their last announcement. And if you want to make sure that, you know, that the therapies being provided are, are ethical um, and evidence-based, then you have to introduce that kind of regulation. And with that can come some things like um, actually putting you know, a, a rate card together for how much providers are allowed to provide. And, and that kind of, uh, of thinking exists in, in other areas. So it's time to bring it to, to the autism field as well. Before I let you go, upon, uh, following the initial announcement, there was a, you know, a huge uh, number of parents who came out, who spoke on this program, who mm. made their voices heard. We saw some ugly confrontations, some not so ugly confrontations. Um, did you think at any point that the government would would change its mind, would listen, and 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 at least in part uh, respond to the concerns they're having? Were you surprised by what you heard today? Uh, can I say yes to both? <laughs> sure um, can. <laughs> uh, so there's the part of me that is a high school civics teacher looks at what's happened today and says, you know, democracy kind of works. Um, our community did all of the things that we're supposed to do, right? We wrote letters, we signed petitions, we made phone calls, we met with our MPPs, we protested repeatedly and all over the place. And, and this government has at least started to, to respond to that and to say, perhaps somewhat bravely, you know, maybe we got it wrong on, on this file. Um, but I, I will say that I spent a, a number of nights very concerned that um, you know, the minister in particular really seemed to be doubling down um, on this program. Um, but I think there are some people, um, perhaps in the back benches in the Conservative caucus, that, uh, that have spoken up for our families. And, and I, I think our message got through. We still have a lot of questions and a lot of concerns. Um, this, this issue is, is far from over. Um, but today was, was a good baby step in the, in the right direction. And just quickly, also I have to ask, because I did have your husband on the program a, a month ago. He, he mm -hmm. actually resigned from Amy Fee's office, the parliamentary assistant to uh, Lisa McLeod, who that office obviously was very much instrumental in, in drafting the, uh, the original policy. Um, any idea, you know, is there any regret over quitting at this point, I guess, given that what we've seen the government move, at least partially? Well, I, I mean, I, I think... Obviously, what, what we as a couple would have preferred was if, if he could have stayed there, if, if the government had, had listened and, and actually gotten the program right the first time, um, then he wouldn't be unemployed right now. Um, so if anyone out there is looking to <laughs> hire him, uh, he's a great guy. Um, you know, but look, I mean, he's on his way to Ottawa right now to organize an autism town hall in Lisa McLeod's riding. Um, so his unpaid advocacy continues. And, um, and we'll find a way through this. What matters at the end of the day is, is not our individual situation. It's, it's this whole community. And I'm just, I'm so proud of, um, of all of the work of all of the organizations and, and individuals that, uh, that have rallied and, and lobbied. I don't think we're done, um, but today is a better day than yesterday. All right, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Laura. That's Laura Kirby McIntosh in Toronto. Thank you. Ontario will be revising the program to eliminate income testing, expand eligible service like speak, speech language pathology and occupational therapy, and will also extend individual child treatment plans for a further six months, some of them at least. But what is the government's timeline for its new consultations and how do today's fresh changes recognize the varying needs across the spectrum for kids? Amy Fee is the Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. She joins us now from Queen's Park in Toronto. Hi, Ms. Fee. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for your time today. You're very welcome, Vilshi. Thank you for having me on today. I want to ask you about the changes your government announced in a second, but first I want to ask why you announced them. What prompted the changes? Was it the pressure from parents? Is this an admission that maybe your government got it wrong the first time? 
So I've been an advocate for people with autism and children with autism for many years. That's one of the reasons why I ran to become an MPP was because I wanted to support people with autism. And I have been listening to parents and stakeholders since we formed government and bringing that feedback back to the minister and back to the premier and our government. And we are certainly listening to people and making sure that we understand what is going on with families with children with autism across the province. Was your government too hasty, though? Do you think, given the feedback that you've heard since, and I take your point that you've brought it back to uh, the minister, but since you've heard that feedback, I mean, there has been a definite blowback from parents. Do you think the government, you know, acted too hastily? I think these are parents who are standing up for their children, and that is something that I have done previously. When the previous Liberal government made changes, I stood up, I fought for my children, I fought for other people's children. That is what I'm doing now, is I'm an advocate within our government to make sure that children with autism have what they need. Part of what you announced today was that uh, kids with more severe needs uh, might might now get more money. So before it was it was there was going to be a certain cap, and uh, it was all based on income. Now it seems that those kids might get more money. How will that work? So we are starting consultations, and I've actually already started consultations this afternoon with stakeholders and with an autism parent as well this afternoon to talk about what that can look like. So we know that autism is a spectrum. I myself have two children with autism, and they are very different. Um, my son was diagnosed with a level three autism. I would say he doesn't need as much support as he did in the past, but he still needs significant support. My daughter with autism is probably more along the lines of a level one autism and needs more help with social skills and life skills. And we need to be looking at that going forward to look at children with autism across the spectrum. And so now we are going to have those consultations to talk about what that type of therapy can look like going forward. With respect, shouldn't your government have t done those consultations prior to the first announcement? I mean, from all the parents that we heard from, that was a major concern that it didn't recognize the severity, you know, the difference in severity. So we were looking at those 23,000 children that were sitting on that wait list and we're still looking at them. That is still our number one goal is to make sure that every child with autism in Ontario for the first time will get support from their Ontario government. Okay, uh, that, that didn't really answer the question. If, if you are looking at eliminating the wait list, do the changes you announced today slow that process down? So we are going to start uh, releasing childhood budgets on April 1st. So children who are currently on that wait list will start receiving childhood budgets in April. But does that change the overall timeline? Like, I, I, I take your point that at the beginning, when your government made this announcement, you were clearly very focused on uh, eliminating that wait list. Does the, do the announcements that you've made today and the p potential changes down the road affect the timeline of eliminating that wait list? Sure. So we are still promising that we are going to clear that wait list in 18 months. And then over the next few months, we're going to be looking at that severity piece and how we address the fact that some children with autism have more severe needs than others. How will you be able to do that, though? If you're, how will you be able to do both? So we do have the backing of the Premier that we will need to look at what kind of investments we need to put into this program, and we will be looking at what kind of money we can put into this program to make sure that children with autism in Ontario have the funding that they need. Okay, so just so I'm clear, that means that there is the possibility of your government upping the total amount, because I, I think that when we had Minister McLeod on after the first announcement, she indicated that the pot of money was the same as, as what the Liberals had before, and that uh, she had sort of had to fight for, for even that much. So what you're saying is, is that the Premier is prepared to to invest more overall, the, the pot of money will be bigger. Yes, so we are looking at enhancing the Ontario Autism Program, not only with other options for families and looking at that severity needs, but also looking at putting more money into the program, and that will be part of that consultation to see how much money we actually need to invest into the program. So the amount of, so you don't know how much more money at this point? No, so we, we want to have those consultations to kind of figure out what those services look like and how many children with severe autism are we looking to help in this province as well and looking at kind of the wide range that these children have of autism. Will Ontarians be able to see how much more money Money, uh, will be allotted in the budget on April 11th. So at this point we need to have those consultations and those are going to happen over the next few months and then we'll definitely be able to announce how much money we can put in going forward. So that just to be clear then that money will not be allocated for in this upcoming budget and you're saying that the consultations will take two months? So it will be the next few months. So we, we want to make sure that we do have the plans going forward for the severity in place. So we are promising that the children currently in service now will have an additional six months on their budget so that way we can ease that transition and we want to make sure that we know where we're going with the severity funding and where we're going with the program by the time those uh, contracts are ending okay, so we will know months. kind of more on where we're going with the money and where we're going with the enhancements in the program more at a later date. So, so just for parents watching the earliest the, then they'll know what those changes are if, if there's extra money that'll be six months from now. 
we're hoping that it will be even less than those six months because we want to make sure that we're ready to go and that the children don't have those gaps in service. All right, I appreciate your time. Thanks, Ms. Beaton. You're very welcome. Thank you.